Now it's time for us to get a first look and a first drive of a new model. Yes, it's the fifth gear team test, and this time Vicky, Johnny and Jimmy are in charge. Today, the team tested the Toyota Corolla. Corollas have been around for years and have always been pretty anonymous to look at and a bit dull to drive, but Toyota reckons this all-new model is going to change all that. So, to find out if Toyota's claims are true, we had a genius idea. Now, this isn't going to be some sort of throw me in a pool of water. Sadly not. No, no, we're not going to get you wet. Some days, there is a first time for everything. We're now facing a car. See if you can tell me what the car is. So what we did is we taped up all identifying badges of the new Corolla. And open. Oh. Initially, I was in a little bit of shock because the side of that car, to me, looked bland. It's, it's a Toyota. By Jove, he did really well. What does make you think that? This little front, the grill on the front there. OK. The little the... slash. And then he couldn't quite remember what car it was. Do you know what its name is? No, it's... <laughs> Some 50 million sold. It's not a... Uh, yeah. It's the... Hang on. It's a... It's a car which is everywhere, but nobody ever remembers it. <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> see, see. It's a C, it's a Toyota... Um, it's a Corolla! C Corolla! Hey! It's a co that's a Corolla! The current chief engineer of the Corolla has said that the previous models were dull. Has he seen this one? This is the new face of Toyota. We've had this in the Prius and the Mirai hydrogen car. Somebody just went, ah! And they've just gone mad with these swishes and swoops and... It's very swishy swoopy. Yeah, but still, I don't think it's the most dynamic car in the world at all. I no. mean, if you were a modern-day James Bond, this is the car you drive because nobody would notice you. Oh, proper stealth. But I guess traditional Corolla drivers might like that anonymity. They don't want mad design, they want reliability and practicality, like a good boot. And zips on the seat covering again. When have you ever, in your whole entire car life, unzipped, unzipped a, seat, a seat, cover. seat cover and put it in the wash? I'm I don't not, want to know that. I'm not no. really See, if there was one person that has unzipped their seats... Nobody was blown away by the exterior, so we had a look at the interior. Roof lining, it's like the stuff that Amazon parcels come wrapped in. I do like... I know it's a little thing, this red stitching, cos it is the back hole of Kolkata in here. Yes, it's very dark. I agree but that's, that's helping me. It's actually <laughs> slightly pink. What's it like in the, the back, BB? This seat is so big, it's got massive shoulders that I can't actually see forward and I will be sick. Very can I ask, good. what did you have for breakfast? Don't worry, Jimmy, I, I can fix it. Oh, yeah, look, she's totally... <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing about it. It doesn't offend me, but it's also not... Yeah, it's just not. So, it's not off to a great start for the Toyota in terms of getting us excited. Perhaps a drive around our track will alleviate the boredom. Already, the gearbox, a continually variable transmission on this hybrid model, was starting to grate. Listen to the CVT, it's howling like a cat. <laughs> Why do you want a car that every time you want to accelerate slightly, not a lot, you have to have... Ah. This is the thing. Just... That's me getting out of bed. Yeah. It feels like you've got your foot hovering on the clutch <laughs> and you're just slipping, slipping. it. <laughs> Honestly, I can't remember a huge amount about the drives. It was that dull. It's built yeah. in England. The engine is built in Wales. Brexit friendly. It's... Yeah, and it will be really well made. They mounted the old powertrain 10 mil lower, 60% stiffer shell, independent rear suspension. They're feeling that? It feels quite neat, actually. This has got realigned McPherson struts for the for best, for more engaging steering, it's true. And it no. It has, has. actually. It has. <laughs> has it? It has. You were joking. No. no. The steering's actually nice. I quite like it. And that's the thing, it is a very refined drive, actually. So, the new Corolla is still dull, but a bit nicer to drive. Good try, Toyota. It may be enough for everyday motorists, but not for proper car enthusiasts like us. This version of the Corolla was meant to be it stepping into the limelight. Unfortunately for me, it's kept the lights turned off. It's a four. Here's a brand new car that should excite me in some way, and it doesn't. And I'm just going to give it a pretty average five out of ten. I'm going to give it a six and a half. It's not massively exciting. But you knew that. Which gives this 12th generation Toyota Corolla a rather disappointing team test score of 15 and a half out of 30.
Today, the team tested the all-new Lexus UX. This is the first ever compact SUV from Lexus, going up against the likes of the Volvo XC40 and Audi Q2. And its standout USP is that it's a hybrid. So, Lexus UX. Yeah. See, I struggle with hybrids because they just sit most of the time on the petrol engine. And you can't plug this in. This is not a plug-in. It is a full hybrid car, which means that it can run in electric mode, but not for very long at all. In an urban environment, it does make sense, you know, where there's a lot of slow start-stop. That's when the EV thing kicks in. Do you like Lexus generally? I kind of do. Styling on this car straight away, I've got issues with it. What's going on with the archers? Look at the size of that wheel in that arch. Little wheels, massive arches. Kind of the first thing I noticed was a yeah. great big nose on it. There is a lot going on. There's a lot of lattice. Mm. Then we got to the boot. Oh, hang on. Where Jane. is the boot? Even when Johnny tried to rip it all apart, it was still... That's tiny. I mean, a couple of big cornflakes packets and you're done. Why has he got a dog? Where did you put him? Jump in, boys. My gosh, have you felt how soft the door handle is? So touchy inside. I'm just stroking the centre console. <laughs> it's so damn soft. It's oh, lovely. This is gorgeous. Can I bring up the colour? What do we think about the red? Love it. Yeah, I, like I, it. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's what ox blood do they call I'm it? I'm feeling like Spider-Man back here. So the interior's on point, but how does the two-liter engine and hybrid system perform, combined with a continuously variable transmission, aka a CVT gearbox? The first thing I notice is that I feel the clutch is slipping, but it's not. It's a CVT. CVT. Yeah. It's weird. Mm. So basically, it's one gear, and it just sort of expands Expand. with your speed. It sounds like the car's hurting. Getting yeah, hurt. it doesn't sound um, like it's healthy. The gearbox has got a strange feeling to it. You know, the revs don't go in a linear way to speed. Right, here we go. So now I'm in electric only now on blue. But you've probably done some serious charging from downhill regen. So this is just for city use. Yeah, I think, I the, think the, EV, the EV is for congestion and cities, yeah. Now we're taking it to the cobbles to see if the chassis suspension and build quality live up to the legendary Lexus standard. This is amazing. Do you think this is amazing over here? The suspension arms will be having a hell yeah. right now. And this is beautifully, is, beautifully yeah, that's cushioned. Impressive. Very quiet. Very, very quiet. Can, Can we hear the squeaks? And you know what? It's very good, this. Slight squeak. What's that? Oh, that's my right knee. Well done, Lexus. This is good, yeah. this. Now, the UX's chief engineer reckons it can match the performance and agility of a regular hatchback. So I've got hold of this basic 150 horsepower Vauxhall Astra, and we're going to do a time lap in each car. Three, two, one. Gosh, he's flying. Okay, the clock started. Oh, I can't believe him flying. <laughs> Oh, you're fighting. That is absolutely shifting. You're going to be skin then. <laughs> you're fighting to go in a bit quick, man. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, we're rushing to the edge. Three, two, one. Oh, OK. Yeah, relax. 47, 47. 47, 47. Can you see it in the sun? So, let's see how the Lexus, with its 178 horsepower, compares. It's going to be quicker. You reckon? Here we go. No cheating, cheating. Stop watch on. Oh, I didn't actually. Now it's gone past. It's got nowhere near the grip. Okay. Whereas the, the Astra was ready to pounce out of the corners, this yeah. is just sort of slugging out of the corners. No. He's quieter now than he was before. Yeah. It's less dramatic. Yes. But it does go when you point to it. It remains pretty level, doesn't it? It's not a massive amount of body roll. This isn't looking pretty, is it? Oh, I don't know, actually. It's looking actually quite close. Oh, you have right oh, the oh, edge. Oh. He's hanging on That's for the and he's not going to make it. It's close, it's close, it's close, it's close. 49.42. 49.42. So, sorry, Mr Chief Engineer, the Lexus is a whole two seconds slower than a normal hatchback. Time for the scores. I'd rather have a Volvo XC40 and I'd probably rather have an Audi Q2. And that's why I'm giving this a six. Even though I'm not a fan of hybrid-style cars, I'm going to give the Lexus UX a seven. I really wanted to love this Lexus. Yes, it's got a smooth ride, but I think it's all a little bit mixed up, so it gets a six. I'm going to give it an eight. 
which is a pretty good solid score. Well done. Which gives the Lexus UX a respectable team test score of 27 out of 40. Today, the team tested the Audi RS5 Sportback. It's a practical performance car and competitor to the BMW M3 and Mercedes AMG C63. It's priced at nearly 70 grand. RS Audis in the past have been criticised for not being as exciting to drive as rivals. So, to help assess its sporty credentials, former F1 driver Karun Chandok has joined us for the team test. This is the Audi RS5 Sportback. It is powered by a 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo, 450 horsepower. What do you reckon? It's green. I love that Sonoma green. Sonoma green. <laughs> I love it. Not, I, I like Are it. Are you joking Do you? me? No, no, I'm, not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. In the end, it's just like a bit of mushy pea kind of colour, which is not really my favourite. I think the front looks mean. I think yeah. it's quite feisty. You know in the rear view mirror that that's coming at you and it's a bit aggressive, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's sort of suffering from civic type R syndrome. It's like pointless vents in places. That's not real. Yeah, I but it, it looks, looks cool. good. <laughs> Some pointless grill action going on, but it's it's tasteful. It is tasteful. They, they've nailed that. Look at that crease yeah, there, that yeah. where it goes into that crease yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, no, that's very cool. So then we looked inside. Jason and I were up front, and yep, all lovely Audi bits and bobs. I like the wheel here. I do like the centre thing. It's very Perth. functional, very Audi. That you just know it's going it's to work. work. Yes, but in the back it was a different story. It feels a bit dark here. I would have <laughs> liked just... to have seen the sunroof come. Back yes. a bit more, just a bit more light. What you like in the back for room, Johnny? Leg room, fine. Yeah. Right. Headroom a little tight. I've got tons of yeah, leg Yeah, that's, really, that's really good, actually. So we did the Alpine route first, just to understand the car's manners. It's good, isn't it? It's, it's really sure-footed and it's quick, and it's exactly what you would expect. Have I got a massive amount of steering feel? No. But you've got a Porsche collaborated 2.9 twin-turbo V6. And when I lift off the gas, it has that lovely little... It's all very Audi, isn't it? It's point and shoot. It's a quattro. It's yeah. everything. Everything we're talking about. It's quick, because uh, Audi is. Yeah. It's functional, like an Audi is. Yeah. Is it exciting? To find out, we took the RS5 onto the handling circuit. Boy, oh boy, the scales dropped from my eyes. Generally, Audis. You know, are very safe. They understeer too much. It was an Audi that had quite a loose rear end. Fan flipping tastic. That feels not very Audi-ish to me. That's yeah. a bit of oversteer. I'll tell you what, though, yeah. it's quick, isn't it? Oh, it's so yeah. quick. This was quite a neutral, almost slightly oversteery feel to it, and that's fun. Karen had a go, and he really liked it. It took him by surprise. Going on, it? Oh, you can play it, which you can't normally do that without these. We nearly had a crash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? That was an interior that, that, wheel trip. Tell you what, Karun, you are whoa. You are good for pelvic floor exercises. You are really good. Oh, that was tighter than I thought. <laughs> oh, man. Did you enjoy that though? I really did. I genuinely think I've changed my mind. I think I might prefer this over the CCC3. Really? Really? Yeah. Just driving on, it just feels so together. Yeah. Luckily, we made it off the test track in one piece, and just before the heavens opened. Had that taste of the RS5 whetted our appetite, or was the Audi a bit of a washout? I am thrilled to announce that the RS5 Sportback has reignited some passion that I have now got for Audis. And as a consequence, I'm going to give this car a very strong 8 out of 10. It was much more fun than I expected, so I'm going to give it an 8. It's exciting, it's fun, it's quick, and it feels dynamic. So I'm torn. I'm either going to give it an 8 or a 9. Let's split the difference. The Audi gets an eight and a half. I'm really quite taken by it. I'm going to give this an 8.5. Pretend my tongue is a point. Which gives the Audi RS5 an extremely impressive team test score of 33 out of 40. This week, the team tested the Cupra Ateca. 
The Ateca is the first model since Seat's sports-oriented division Cupra became an independent sub-brand. It claims to offer practicality, four-wheel drive capability and rapid performance, and at less than 40 grand, it is an alternative to more expensive hot SUVs from Alfa, Audi and Jag. Gentlemen, this is the new Cupra Ateca. No, you mustn't say say it because there's no say it badge on it. How are you say carrying on doing that when he's <laughs> looking like that? I can Put see a small what piece of tape across my eyebrows and now I'm different. <laughs> which is why this is nothing like a SEAT at all. I applaud somebody who tries something new. However, what Cupra should have done is make a fundamental new car. And that's the problem here, because there's also a cheaper, identical-looking, though less sporty, SEAT Ateca. Just looks like a cut-price superhero breast badge. <laughs> I quite like this. I think this car's got good looks. Look, the car's all right. The branding's just lies and weirdness. weirdness. I'm still Johnny Smith, for goodness sake. You knew it. This has got some proper performance. Not 62 in 5.2 seconds. Which is exactly the same as the Honda Civic Type R. 300 ponies under the bonnet. Yeah, so it should be pretty punchy. It's not a stay out because they tell you it's not and it's more sophisticated, it's more sporty. So why? In the light, does it say? Oh. What does it say? What does it say? Say at lighting. Say at lighting. lighting. <laughs> I love that. And of course, if you look at the brakes, it has a four-ringed Audi badge on it. We've had a look at some SUVs, OK? This one actually does have a, a decent boot. boot space. That is a big boot. You're absolutely right. As you know, I have a bit of a beer in my bonnet about why you'd want An SUV. a fast SUV. That's because he can't see the big picture ever. Grumpy Johnny. I just, I'm just interested now in having a lovely time. <laughs> and then we got inside. I think it's unbelievably drab. Boring, not different, and not what I want from your performance brand. I want colours, I want textures, I want reflections. To be fair, there's a lot of room back here, and I love the pan roof. The pan roof I do is... love a pan roof. Yeah. Triumphant. Right then, what about handling? So then we went for a drive on the hill route. I drove. Oops. <laughs> I do have six buttons to play with in terms of setup. So what have you got? Comfort, sport, right? Off and the road. next one is a little Hang bit confusing because the next uh, setting is the Cupra mode. As a passenger, I didn't really feel the difference. That's not what this is about. See, if you don't like the cabin, you're going to like that. It goes like stink, and I like stink when it smells like that. Oh, oh you. yeah, you. Yeah, it is the best car I've ever jumped. That Alpine route with Vicky behind the wheel, it really gripped. Oh, there you go. Okay. Found some understeer. Yeah. Right, Vicky. <laughs> All right. It felt more like a hot hatch than an SUV. This is the first SUV I've been in that's tickled me pink. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I, I just like what they're doing with this car. I'm going for another jumper. Oh, you're not. Yeah. Donut! <laughs> oh. I'm having fun. What else have we got down on the old control? Off-road. I'm driving. <laughs> we took it off-roading, so Vicky swapped with Jimmy because Jimmy likes off-roading. It's off-road. Is this a good moment to mention that I've never been off-roading in an SUV? We well, go, go quite. Go, go very gentle road. because of oh. bumpers. I always knew there was going to be a bit of a ground clearance problem because it doesn't raise and drop, and it's got this body kit. <laughs> I was going slow then. Not slowly enough. No, this yeah. needs creeping. Yes. Give it some squirt. Oh, crumbs, man. So, from my seat, the off-road experience was... Oh, has this got descent mode? Well, I don't know. I'm... Well, it oh, hasn't. Presumably, it has. It, yes. It's doing its own thing, it though. Is. The four-wheel drive system was very clever because you could definitely feel it kicking in and making sure that there was enough traction. So, with the Ateca well and truly tested both on and off-road, what's the scores on the boards for this SUV from Spanish Shores? I'm giving the Super Cupra Ateca 8 out of 10. It goes. I'm going to have to give it, oh, a 7. This is a consumer show, it's not all about me. There's a good market for a car like this, apparently, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, as long as you ignore the badge completely. Which gives the Cupra Ateca a very decent team test score of 23 out of 30. Well done, say it. Cupra. So this week we're looking at the new BMW G20 320D X-Drive M Sport.
aka the new 3 Series. BMW have sold 15 million of them since 1975, making it their most successful model. So can this, the seventh version, maintain the 3's reputation as one of the best driving and best built mid-sized cars around? Prices start at 32 grand, but the one we've got costs 40. It's a beautiful thing. It just looks right. I'm loving the black details, the yeah. wheels, the blacked out windows. It's got active nostrils. It's aero inspired, so it's not letting in as much air. It's closed right now to make the car more aerodynamic, but like a Venetian blind, it opens up, letting in more airflow when the car needs more cooling. So we've got a new platform, a new body. The engine, though, we have seen before, but this is 50 kilograms lighter than its predecessor. Can I show you something which I know you'll get sexed up about? It's a thing of beauty, oh. is. Oh. oh! Spinning wheel centres, so BMW stays the right way up. That's good, though, isn't it? This actually is one of the class-leading size boots. I mean, honestly, I don't think I've ever seen Vicky get in a boot of a car before. BMW themselves say that this car has now more space on the interior than ever before. So we decided to go three abreast in the back, which is a bit creepy because there was no one in the passenger seat, but, you know, we're testing the car. It's not the real world. They've done a really good job with this cabin upgrade, for sure. That's really gosh, great, isn't it? yeah. To reduce the distraction of fiddling with a touchscreen, the 3 Series comes with the latest gesture control. Jase, what are you doing? It's got gesture control. Is it, are you doing the right gestures? Look, 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 look. My gosh, that did work. Volume. Is that actually working? You're just making up. No, 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 that, that's change the CD. What? To... What? What? <laughs> what? To American Soft Rock. Interesting. Yes. Needed. I don't think so. Should we go for a drive? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Well, it's supposed to be the ultimate driver's saloon. I had to test it properly. Oh, no. Ooh. I don't think it was a very good idea for me to be on that side of the car because I got the full weight of particularly Johnny at each time Jason went hooning it. Yeah! Oh, oh, yes! Yeah, stop! Gypsy! No, no. Oh. The chassis was good. It was pointy. It was dynamic. You could definitely feel the difference when you select different driving modes. In sport, it allowed me to have some fun where I could slide the car a little bit. It was very user-friendly on the, on the limit. Proper bit of kit. This car has got innovative damping, right? It's when the new. car has only got Jason in it, the damping system accommodates for it. Yes. So if you've got a boot full of stuff from the garden centre, it will know. It, yeah, it just constantly it adjusts. adjusts. Oh, okay. so, yeah. But that's the thing about the BMW, it is a driver's car. In, 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 in out, in, in, take in. it all about. But the 3 Series haven't finished showing off just yet. It's got all the latest tech. I'd love you to go through these cones and then press a button and the car will automatically reverse exactly the way you came without you having to touch the steering wheel. So is this effectively remembering yes. where I'm going yeah. and where I've been? It's yeah. remembering your steering input and then we'll reverse that for you. OK, so off we go then. Up to 22 miles an hour this will work. So this is simulating like a windy drive or a narrow lane. Yep. Oh, there's a tractor. There's a tractor. Oh. Oopsie. Best reverse. Right. So reverse. So you have to pinch pinch reversing the system. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Press reversing the system. Hands bit. off wheel. Hands so. off wheel. A little bit of throttle. Look at Look the steering wheel. It's, it's counting moving. down. It's going. Not too fast, Plato. <laughs> it's counting it down. Look. Look at that. Orange. Oh. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you know whoa, what? Whoa, whoa, wow. whoa, whoa. Isn't that amazing? That's mental. Is it going to stop? There you go. End of route it. will be reached shortly. How cool is that? <laughs> So, what scores for BMW's latest high-tech 3 Series? I'm going to give it a very good 8 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 because I think it's a fantastic car. Everything works great. So, I'm going to give it an 8.5, which gives the BMW 3 Series an impressive team test score of 32.5 out of 40. This week, the team tested the all-new Mazda 2. This is the Japanese company's latest offering in the competitive mid-sized family car sector. The Mazda 3 starts at £20,000, but we've got the GT Sport Tech version, which, thanks to uprated wheels, trim and entertainment system, comes in at £25,500. 
So, boys, this is the Mazda 3 hot competition for the Ford Focus and VW Golf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a Mazda. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to like what they've done. They're not going to follow everyone else. They're going to have done their own thing. Don't like it. <gasps> Immediately. Hang on, <laughs> hang on a minute. I just don't like it. I, I just don't like it. I thought you'd like this one, because this one is all built on human centricity. What, what does it mean? Well, we don't know. Is it ergonomics? Is it shape? Well, it's not power. Mm. It's only got 122. Surely that's a typo. 120 horsepower? I mean, what's that about? Ford have a three-cylinder, one-litre EcoBoost with 125. Yeah. So more horsepower for half the capacity. But not only that, they've called it a GT Sport Tech. Yeah. There's three things there which shouldn't be in the title. <laughs> GT Sport and Tech. GT Sport Tech. Bold words. I don't think it's a terribly unpleasant car to look at. I mean, the front end is lovely. It's got a hint of Aston Martin about it. It does look Alfa Romeo-ish. Bit of Brera at the bum. This is the problem. What? Where's the hint of Mazda? It's almost like they've nicked ideas. And it's got no identity. But what about the interior? That didn't work. It didn't work. How are you moving your seats? I have electricity. Little you have a... The... I've got a... Uh, I've got a... Christ almighty. <laughs> yeah. This is meant to be a family car. You've got what, how many USBs and what's his name have we got in there? One USB. How much does a USB cost to install? Oh, I mean, we're pence. talking pence, there's aren't no, we? There's nothing. It just feels nasty. Everything, and I mean everything, bar the door handle and the speaker cover, is the same shade black. So, there's conflict around the exterior and interior quality and finish, but what about on the road? Masters are renowned for being nice to drive. Plus, this model has a little surprise under the bonnet. It does actually have a very mild hybrid system. Does it? Oh, ah. do, do the Great tell, Mr. Smith. Very, very mild. It has a very small electric motor, which takes the torque stress out of the engine under hard acceleration. It, and the only reason why it does it is to get extra economy. So, the hybrid system should make acceleration smoother and faster. Let's see. OK, are you ready for some power? Yeah, let's do it. This second gear flat Ooh. out, ready? We are uphill and we're fully loaded. Tell me that's not second. Yeah, second, second flat. Oh, it's skin off rice pudding, didn't it? Just put a turbo on it and give it another 50 horsepower. It <laughs> should be right. <laughs> That's what everybody else is doing. Yeah. That's one of the bit I don't quite get. Turbo is efficiency. I um, will tell you that it's got a very sweet chassis, a nice steering and a decent gearbox, OK? It? it does feel a little bit like they just haven't been brave enough. Yeah, it does. And so, to the scores. The Mazda 3. Confusingly large capacity engine, fairly interesting styling from certain angles. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. How does it stack up against its rivals? <sighs> OK. Which is why I'm going to give it a middling 5 out of 10. Human centricity. I'm not so sure. In my opinion, this Mazda needed some eccentricity. I'm giving it a 5. Mm. It's not going to be a good score. It's going to get blown away by the competition. I hate it. It's going to get the worst score I've ever given a car. Which gives the Mazda 3 GT Sport Tech a lacklustre team test score of 18 out of 40. <laughs> The Jeep brand has been around for over 75 years, and for the last 30, the Wrangler has been the simple, paired-back offering with incredible off-road ability and retro styling. This new model costs 45 grand and, on first appearances, seems to be sticking to the tried and tested blueprint. So then, yeah. the new Jeep Wrangler... It's quite tall, actually. It has evolved with time, just. But it's always been a flawed thing. It's fairly one-dimensional. It's I mean, to go off-road, drive slowly, grin, have the roof off, wear your denim cut-offs. I just hate it. It's awful. But it's built for a specific thing, and that is it. They're bad in many ways, and you kind of know that before you even open the door and get in. I think that you're missing the fact that this is a brand and it's iconic and people lust after it and they want it. Just, just look. Oh. What, what's that for? That big protrusion. That's for slow impact in America legislation. Is Am I being a bit...? Cos I don't like That's quite it. comfy. So you've got 200 brake horsepower. This weighs almost two tonnes. 
It'll be slow, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it will be slow. As also someone that owns a Suzuki Jimny, I get the fact that you're paying money to have basically nothing. Have you seen where the speaker is? If you've got a dog, you're going to have the subwoofer under the dog's bum, aren't you? Ooh. Proper woofer woofer. Maybe some vibrate. Yeah. yeah. It'd be a woofer woofer. <laughs> this is for two people with no kids, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The boot really wasn't very big, so I'm not sure you could actually take a suitcase if you were going on holiday. This will be really uncomfortable on the road. It'll be jiggly. In which and... case, I suggest you two tallies go in the back, because that's funny. Uh, oh, <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to have a big frontal impact with you. It is actually, once you're in the seat, you've got a nice wheel arch armrest. If you wanted anything in the glove box, you'd have to wait until I left the vehicle for me to get it for you. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a drive? Although the Wrangler has off-road looks, many buyers will probably spend most of their time on-road. Let's hit the tarmac. It's not got a lot of grunt, I'll be honest. No. no. When I turn the wheel, nothing seemed to happen, and then it would turn. This takes steering vagueness to a whole new level. Does it? Does yeah, it? yeah, yeah. You have to sort of preempt the corner. Yeah. It was noisy and pretty sluggish. It lacks sophistication, doesn't it? The whole yeah. thing, really. Well, come on, the fit and finish has got to be pretty good if you're now asking such heavy money. I was going to say it's a rough diamond. It probably isn't even a diamond. It's probably, I don't know, quartz. Can I just say, it's bloody awful. You're not enjoying it, do you? Oh, I'm really not. Quiet. I just don't get it. There's no windows in the back. Well, there are, but I can't open them. Yeah. Oh, the seats are hideous. What has this got in terms of safety trickery? I have a passenger airbag. Right. Karun has an airbag. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Driver gets an airbag. ABS, I think. In fact, meagre safety features means that, out of a possible five stars in European crash test ratings, the Wrangler scores one. Really? I mean, that's terrible, isn't it? OK, the Wrangler design and on-road performance are lacking. Maybe off-road is where it's at. Right, it's better than a Defender off-road. OK, now, the really? really rough bit, no. It feels yeah. disconnected in every... I'm just trying to grab positive. I, I honestly think I've been more comfortable sat in a pub bar stall than having the back of that thing. This should be able to tackle stuff like this very yeah, this easily. Should be easy for this. It just feels like I'm driving along a normal road. What just... sort of road do you drive what on? What do you drive <laughs> on in Lincoln? Actually, it was very comfortable off-road. More comfortable than most off-roaders I've been in. Of course, any off-roader worth its salt should be able to handle a bit of water. What's the worst that could happen? So do we think that bumper lip thing is going to create... Oh, gosh, that's a good point. ..better wave. Oh, oh, my God. Right, here we go. Five miles oh, an hour. Oh, no, no, that's too that's fast. fast. That's quite fast. Karun is used to going in. Maximum attack. Seems that's not always the best technique. The water came over the bonnet when I first went in, so I might have been a bit aggressive on the way in. Can you hear it gargling? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I feel like I'm in a bloody boat. This is a good-sized pond. <laughs> what a way that. that wasn't bad, Coon, actually. That was yeah, not a bad effort. Right. Is that the first time you've done that? Yeah. yeah. That's like easy peasy. So, as an everyday proposition, the Wrangler struggled, though it proved a capable off roader. So, what are the scores? My heart wants to give this car a good score, but in reality and against today's competition, it's really hard to do that. So, I'm going to have to go with my head and give it a 4.5. It wasn't very refined, and it's a lot of money, so I'm going to give it a four. I'm being fairly generous, I feel. About as good as its crash rating. Which gives the new Jeep Wrangler a very disappointing team test score of 13.5 out of 40. This week, the team tested the Volvo XC40. This is Volvo's first compact crossover, designed to sit below its XC60 and 90 big brothers. Despite being late to this sector, Volvo hopes that a combination of premium build, comfort and looks will draw families from established rivals like BMW's X1 and the Audi Q3. Has this just come off the transporter? Because it's got that protective cover on the top and the wheels on the No, it hasn't. <laughs> I don't, I don't. This is a two-tone. This is like a nice little bit of fashion. The best bit about this car to look at is everything. So this package actually costs £700 and it's the Does roof it? the wind mirrors and the wheels. Yeah, white, white, white facades on the wheels. White wheels? Behave. What's that all about? 
Oh, Bold. boys, have a bit of fun. This is this is an urban premium SUV, and this looks cool. I think this is an amazing looking car, and every time I see one on the road, my head gets turned. That does not look like its bigger brother XC60, and it doesn't look like the XC90. There are some similarities, but it, it's distinctly different, pleasantly different, I think. Let's start with one of the most crucial things for a family SUV, boot space. Do you know what, the boot's OK. I wouldn't say the boot's... I don't think it's class leading but a nice little touch where it folds up to hold your shopping. I'm going to drive this, guys. Yeah. Look at the door panels. Look at the ratio of carpet to plastic. Oh, I've not seen that it's before. It's nicely cut like out. And, and it's deeply sculpted. Yeah. Now, what they've done is they've used carpet to, A, make it a cheaper build. But sound, sound, I reckon. Soundproofing. Yeah. And there's more room. Do you know what? I love the fact that they've mixed up some materials. You've got carpet, you've got leather, you've got this, this lovely little bit metal bit. Mm. Yeah. The roof is a little disappointing. It doesn't gone up feel there. great. It feels like a pub carpet. It does. That but at least, like it's, a... you know, at least they've tried and they've, they've made an, an effort. Look at these headrests. Sculpted, beautiful things. But are they, are they to protect you in the event that you go forward? Because that looks like it's oh, a perfect is. imprint that for is. your head. Uh, yeah. Do you reckon? The infotainment side of the Volvo, you've got this lovely big digital screen. You've got the, the portrait-style touchscreen which we've seen a lot of in Teslas. I love the fact that it's upright. Most cars have theirs on, like, on a yeah. horizontal platform. Yeah. I just think this is super. And Volvo certainly hasn't lost their legendary sense of practicality. You go into the centre console and there's a proper like kitchen bin. And you can oh, lift it out. And it's Yay. got a little... Oh, a little net! Practicality. Why haven't we had, you know, we've seen that many, many years ago. Simple idea, great. How are things in the back? Yeah, oh, great. You know we've got what? a nice little net on the back. Annette, Annette, she's everywhere. It's just a good place to be. Yeah. I reckon you could do a blindfold test and sit in half a dozen cars and you know immediately you were in a Volvo. Shall we um, strap up and go? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, does this family runabout also feel refined enough on the move? So, this bad boy's got a um, two litre petrol. T4, one of my favourite engines, Johnny. This is uh, the eight speed auto. Uh, it's really smooth. It's really... The, the thing about it is, I think they've got the damping and they've got the, the sort of chassis just right, because you never buy a Volvo for a sort of hardcore chassis. No. no. And it's got a number of things on it, like the sunroof option, 360-degree camera. Some, so some of the options are really useful. But they are options, so you've got to be careful. Volvo is a little bit stingy with stuff as standard. And one thing I noticed when I first got in it, and you guys might find it in the back, that your posture's really nice. That car on the drive was an absolute pleasure to be in. I'm going to be bold here. Go for it. For the price point of this car, yeah. this is the nicest interior I've ever sat in. Ever? Yes. Wow, for the price that. point. Cool. So, what's the scores on the doors for the stylish Swedish designed SUV? This is a Volvo I'd recommend to a mate, so I'm going to give it a cracking eight. I really like lots of things about this car, so I'm going to give it a nine. Or as they say in Sweden, meow. I think it's great. I'm going to score it probably the highest score ever. It's a nine. It's a great car, and it's a great all-round car, and I really like it, and that's why I'm going to give it this mark, an eight and a half, which gives the Volvo XC40 a very impressive team test score of 34.5 out of 40. Brajot! That's well done in Swedish, in case you're wondering. Today, the team tested the BMW X7. The X7 is the biggest BMW ever made. It's 5.15 metres long, it weighs 2.3 tonnes, and it's their latest model to rival large premium 4x4s like the Range Rover and the Mercedes GLS. Prices start at £72,000, but we've got the M50D, which is priced at 85 grand. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Open BMW. Yeah, you don't Johnny, like it, do you? X7. Don't be, don't be like that. What? I think it's lush. What? Do you like it? I really like it, but I love it's it because it's uh, because of its ugliness. I think he's off his head. I, I think it's great. Oh, but look at this. Mm. I'm not going around. Why not? Why not? Because I've seen that. Look at this. Because I've I've seen I've seen the pictures of it, <laughs> and I, I don't know if I can take it. Oh it? my gosh. What's wrong There's with nothing you? subtle about it's this car. It's just bad Photoshop no. made real. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be seen dead in it. <laughs> it's BMW's design department needing to be sacked. It's everything that I don't like about the car industry wrapped up in one 
But John, you've got what? a family. How practical is this? But it's not practical because look at the size of it. Johnny, well, Johnny's got no taste, has he? Jeez. Look, little open tailgate. This is Look, I love a tailgate that flaps down. I think it's really I mean, I can lush. tell it's built well. Have you seen the gear shifter? No. Do you remember the crystal maze? Yeah, well, I love that. Get in. Are you getting there? Oh, 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 get out! <laughs> yeah. A cut glass gear knob. Will that dazzle you? It is actually sometimes dazzling. Sometimes my rock gets dazzling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's, it, what's in the your big scoop ahead of the gear knob? You can cool or heat the cup holders. Look, and, yeah, and exactly. you've even got... LEDs to represent the temperature. <laughs> Never seen that before, and I'm lusting after one. So do you think a car like this needs a big key? Well, it, it seems to need a big everything. Oh, my. Whoa. That is the size of... I used to have a Motorola V50 clamshell <laughs> yeah, phone. That's the size of it a Motorola like it, V50. You can actually park the car, start the car, and you can drive the car out of a parking space if, if it's someone what else. What was this? Got, yeah. Uh, I genuinely wasn't bothered about driving it. So Jason went first. Here's an interesting thing with the old X7. Four turbos. Wow. It's Is got, it really? It's got four turbos. I'll tell you what, it's quite wafty, isn't it? Two and a half tons, man. 0 to 62, 5.4 seconds. No. Yeah. It really can't be. <laughs> Is it? Do I want one even more? Ah, <laughs> do you? Driving, this is as luxurious as a range. Yeah, without a doubt. I would be more comfortable in a Range Rover. Really? Yeah. Do you want to swap? Yeah. It's rapidly going downhill in my books. Yeah! Wow. Do you know what it was lacking? Opulence. It was starting to become two against one as Vicky was questioning the luxury in the back you'd expect from an 80 grand car. So she got behind the wheel. At city speeds, which is what we're reenacting here, Nice and nimble, steering's light, it's got a good lock on it. This is definitely the better place to be, I th Don't think. think. Yeah. yeah. Johnny, yeah, yeah, yeah. you fancy a go now? Have, I, have we whetted your appetite enough? No, I'm pretty dry, to be honest. Come uh, on, Johnny. OK, all right. Yeah. Taste it, taste well, it. in the name of journalism, I yeah. will do it. Well, don't close your mind. As the X7 has four-wheel drive and BMW claim it has generous ground clearance, I decided we should head to the off-road track. So you're enjoying it, aren't you? No. I'd like to think that Johnny slightly warmed towards it, but you know what he's like. Oh, I don't like SUVs, yeah. Cars of this worth, when are you ever going to risk taking them off-road? Because you go, well, if I smack the front bumper, that's four grand. Go on, you fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not my car. <laughs> It's been tested on and off-road, so what are the scores for BMW's super-sized four-wheel drive? Never going to live this down with one Mr J Smith, but anyway, I'm going to give it a nine. I think the BMW X7 is a vulgar vehicle that doesn't really need to exist. And on that basis, although it's well-made, I'm going to give it that a two. I don't want to ever see one on the road. The more I was in it, the less I liked it, so I'm going to give it an OK-ish 7. So, despite me not being the biggest fan, the BMW X7 gets a pretty decent team test score of 18 out of 30. Today, the team test was the Toyota Supra. Gazoo Racing. This legendary flagship sports car badge has been missing from the Toyota lineup since 2002. Yes, the Supra is back and apparently offers the ultimate expression of driving pleasure. It has a 3-litre, 340-horsepower engine and prices start at £52,000, though we tested the slightly plusher Pro model, which costs two grand more. So, boys, this is the Toyota GR Supra, and the GR stands for Gazoo Racing, Gazoo. which is Toyota's in-house motorsport division, so it's been developed with them. What do you think? I can't make up my mind. I am really into it. I'm really fascinated by it. That ducktail is fab. Look at it here. Getting all touchy yeah. feeling. I'm, getting, I'm just getting You're getting all amorous on. for the vehicle. Have a lie down. <laughs> just, just. Do you want your chaise longs? I'd love a chaise long right now. Just think it looks superb. I love those haunches at the back. Love those cuts on the doors. Check this out. It's just so bizarre. Oh yeah. Honestly. There's an unusual thing in the boot because it hasn't got a divider that stops the boot coming into the cabin. You see all the way through. But just, I think I that's quite that. dangerous. I don't get that. <laughs> I mean, that, that can't have been planned. That can't be right, surely. Well, if you, have, if you have loose plums, they're going to make a right mess in there. 
That's part of the Gazoo Racing mentality. It's called the Gazoo Shelf. There isn't one. Yeah, there isn't one. It's super. <laughs> it's, it's, you don't need it, so don't put it in. It's Gazoo spec. What is under here? That's oh, just a battery. battery. It's with a BMW badge on it and um, some control boxes with BMW badges. Why badge haven't on. they put stickers know, over them? Oh, just take that bit out. Obviously, it's based on BMW underpinnings. A lot's been said about that. It's quite divisive. It just feels like a rebranded BMW. Apparently, they've teamed up with BMW because it's speeded up the, the process of, of, um, of development. Do you know what? I've got really annoyed there. <sighs> Go on. Oh, no. I've just gone annoyed. I've gone Mardi. Why? It's all, it's just BMW. It's BMW, 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 BMW. It doesn't look like they've put much effort into making it a Supra. So that's slightly disappointing. <sighs> I can't help thinking that Toyota might have been a bit lazy. They're a rich company. The Supra's one of their flagships. It is their flagship. They should have gone big, you know? You're getting from the outside, which is super Japanese, and you're getting inside, which seems almost a little bit conservative. This is just too sensible. So for some reason, I ended up in the passenger seat and Johnny took me out for a little spin. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, God, it's not even manual, is it? Oh. No, you can't buy a manual. In the 50 grand sports car market, the Supra needs to work on the road as a daily driver. This is made in Austria alongside the Z4. Yeah, which again feels kind of... I'm a bit nervous about it being a bit too Germanic. <laughs> That's nice. Got it's some pokey. It feels very, very capable. Yeah. The brakes are good. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I really like the pedal feel and I really like the steering feel. But I'm trying not to think about BMWs. It's really hard. Like right. Plato said, once you've seen a badge under the bonnet or in a door shut or something, yeah. you go. <sighs> but you know, on the one hand, you can, you can constantly beat on about that or you can just be happy that, that it exists. Why don't we do the latter? <laughs> the way it drives at the moment, I'm quite happy to celebrate its existence because it, it does feel very cool. So the plan next was to ramp it up a bit and go on the outer handling circuit. Jason came along, I thought, fair's fair, let's do rock, paper, scissors, see who would get in the hot seat. One, two, three. Oh, no. Plato's up. <laughs> Wasn't me. Again. And things got even worse. Fake engine noise played through the speakers. Well, it's got a sensitised engine as well, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I know, I know. Why, why do manufacturers do this now? But what is the point? Right, so up front, we've got a straight six. Back in the day, always sounded nice. Sounds lush. Why bother? Yeah, the steering's accurate, but yeah. I feel a bit disconnected. Mm -hmm. So we're in the stiffest setting, aren't we? We are, hun. Do you want to loosen it up a bit? Well, I think it needs an even stiffer setting. Yeah. It feels quite soft. Yeah. This feels, from my position, really tidy, but there's got a little bit of play in the chassis for you to have a bit of fun. Well, no. Hang on cue. <laughs> I could do with a few more grab handles when I'm in here with you. With Johnny, I just felt I could do with another gin and tonic. <laughs> it's pretty good fun, to be honest. Yeah. Just struggling, though. 50 odd grand. It's not special enough mm -hmm. for me to put my money with Toyota rather than BMW. Yeah, good point. Is it special enough to take you out of a Porsche? So, after everyone had driven it, except me, what would be the scores on the doors? The fact that it is such a BMW underneath and there's been no effort really to disguise that makes me want to mark it down. But then again, the BMW is a great car, so I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a seven. If it was based upon looks alone, I'd give this car a nine and a half because I'm really into it. I do wish, though, that Toyota had definitely gone their own way with the interior. So on that basis, I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it an eight. For me, it is not as good as a Porsche Cayman. And this car has to be spectacular if it's coming into this marketplace. So I'm going to give it a disappointing and disappointed 6.5 which gives the Toyota GR Supra a good but not exceptional team test score of 21.5 out of 30.